I think you can safely label 2023 as a historic year in gaming and potentially one of the biggest years we've ever seen as consumers in history, period. And in today's video, I want to walk through a list of the upcoming Game Awards 2023 game nominations and actually cast my vote for the first time with you all together and share my overall thoughts, opinions on the games themselves, where we're headed from here in gaming, and of course, no doubt, some of the gripes and nitpicks that do go along with an event like the Game Awards, but really all tying it back to the quality titles that we saw released this year, celebrating them together, and sharing my personal predictions as well as personal favorites on who might walk away as the big winner from each category, and we need to hop into this right now. So full disclosure, as we hop into this list, we are going to be starting from the last category, ending up all the way at the game of the year 2023 pick. And I will share my personal take on which game I think we'll be walking away with that prestigious award but there are going to be some categories such as the esports event content creator of the year and various other ones towards the tail end here where i'm honestly just going to be picking things just to pick them so we're going to throw our vote towards the league of legends thing i'm not into esports or that scene at all so i really don't have an opinion one way or another on who the best esports coach is because i don't know who any of these people are so that's just where i fall on the matter you can uh feel any kind of way about it however you want i do think it's funny to see just how seriously people take the game awards uh you know really getting worked up about it online getting into arguments over it and then if you stop and think about it do these awards really even mean anything at the end of the day they don't it's just a fun event for the gaming community to come together so uh, I'm going to go into this with a very open mind, but there's going to be some categories, especially at the start of this list here, where I'm just going to be clicking a random thing just to cast the vote, and I have no clue what I'm voting towards. Now, there's a lot of conversation to be had around really how the voting works to begin with, because it's really just about 10% of the score in terms of what the actual audience says compared to what the board of uh, all the various different media outlets that Jeff Keighley has assigned to this thing, uh, their voting power actually Actually outweighs us tremendously so keep that in mind even if you're just voting towards any particular random game or category it's not really meaning that much in terms of the overall rank and uh, you can probably see here best esports game um don't have a really particular uh you know opinion on this kind of stuff because it's just not my scene on, on the gaming space um i don't know who any of these content creators are so uh, i wish i could vote for somebody that i at least have the slightest idea of who they are but uh, we'll go with this gentleman uh, on the far right with the hoodie we don't know what kind of content he makes but that is what it is uh, most anticipated game i will weigh in on this just slightly because i think that it's going to go to final fantasy 7 rebirth i think that's absolutely where it's headed and in fact i'm going to go ahead and cast my vote for that although i would say that hades 2 might actually fall more in with line with what i really want to see in fact you know we're going to go ahead and vote hades 2 because uh, star wars outlaws is also on the list I'm, i haven't been shown enough of that game to be entirely sold on it but it is yet another one that i'm very much excited to play through once it does finally come out but we're going to cast our vote with hades 2 i'm very excited for that one to come out um, i actually need to get caught up on final fantasy 7 remake before i can even talk about you know rebirth and everything so we'll go ahead and uh and cast the vote with hades too i think that that's more of a um solid you know pr not really a prediction on who i think will win but i'm going to vote with some of these as uh, who I want to see win, not just who I think will see win. And we'll make the distinction when that's happening. Now, the only two as far as best adaptation that stick out to me is The Last of Us and the Super Mario Bros. movie. I thoroughly enjoyed both of these cinematic experiences. I, the Last of Us, obviously very different in terms of like a short TV series that I very en much enjoyed going through. And then the Super Mario Bros. movie was just that sit down and be taken back flooding with nostalgia nostalgic memories as a child like you're watching an amazing incredible animated super mario bros movie uh, it's no doubt going to get a sequel it's no doubt created an entire new revenue stream for nintendo and we know now to expect a live action legend of zelda movie in the future um i don't i didn't give twisted metal a chance i've heard some people talk about this online as far as uh, its spinoff, you know, from a gaming series to a uh, to a, a TV show, I don't know really how quality it is. So, really, it's going to come down between Last of Us and Super Mario Bros. Movie. And just for the kind of nostalgic feelings that Mario Bros. Movie made me feel, I'm voting that 100%. Although I will say that The Last of Us is definitely a close second. Go watch that series if you're into survival horror type stuff at all. It's really cool, really good zombie apocalypse type of story. Um, best multiplayer. 
Now, this one is going to be kind of interesting because they're just, these games are so different in how the multiplayer works. So, um, I have not played Baldur's Gate 3. I do know that that's going to be heavily in the conversation for game of the year, and rightfully so. It seems like it's really done a lot right for that video game genre as a whole. I don't know that I've heard people really sing the praises of the multiplayer aspects or components of that game as much as just the endless story possibilities is really what I've heard a lot of people praise about it. Diablo 4, I have had limited hands-on time with, with playing with some friends online, and this, this is extremely enjoyable to play as co-op, so I would definitely say that multiplayer, I would lean towards potentially this. I haven't played the multiplayer so much in Mario Bros. Wonder outside of some local couch co-op, which I do very much enjoy, and I would say that Mario Bros. Wonder would hands down take it, but there is a big gripe with this game for me personally, which is the fact that whenever it comes to online play, you can traverse through the world and kind of see the other character going through the level with you, but it's not entirely like you guys are truly uh, tag teaming the level like you would in the old new Super Mario Bros. games, and we even saw online play enabled in prior new Super Mario Bros. games, so I felt like it was a step back to not include it fully in Mario Bros. Wonder. That said, just from an enjoyment level, I mean, Mario Bros. Wonder is literally right there in the game of the year conversation for me, so I think we got to throw the vote towards that. Um, have not played Street Fighter VI yet, and I'm also not the biggest fan of just um, traditional 1v1 fighting games. I mean, yes, they're enjoyable, but it's not like a day one. I got to go purchase it and experience it um, through, you know, through and through right out of the gate. Um, we have best sports and racing game. Um, let's see, we have, well, we got to throw it Hot Wheels Unleashed Turbo Charge just for the simple fact that I'm a little bit more of a fan of arcade style racers. This is actually kind of hyper realistic in its own weird way, even though it's Hot Wheels as far as the car mechanics. It's not like Hot Wheels Turbo Charge back on the N64. I will tell you that for certain, but still, nonetheless, we're going to vote that as far as the best racing game um best sim slash strategy game so advanced wars one plus two reboot camp yet another nintendo published title that <laughs> got held back for an entire year um fire emblem engage and pikmin 4 all on this list now um uh, city skylines two and then company of heroes three i have literally no experience with um i think i'm i'm just gonna have to throw the vote out there towards fire emblem um just from everything i've seen as far as the game goes maybe you could say pikmin 4 but i'm gonna go with fire emblem for this particular um category it's one that again i don't necessarily oh i just messed up my voting here so let me just say if i can go reset this we are back but yeah it's one that you know i don't spend all the time in the world um, on those particular type of games best family game is a really weird category uh, to begin with for me because it's like if it looks kind of like it could cater towards a young audience it's automatically a family game even though i would argue like some of the final stages in mario wonder it takes like an elite gamer to get past um, but we got to either go Mario Wonder, and I think that that's actually who's going to walk away with this award, even though, um, you know, you could argue that Mario Wonder is a family game because it caters towards a family and a younger audience. That's certainly fine. Sonic Superstars, though, I'm very tempted to give that a vote just because I thoroughly enjoyed that game as well. It's a great year to enjoy 2D platformers, let me tell you that. Um, and it's not in near as many categories, but we're going to go with who I think will win it, which is Mario Bros. Wonder, and rightfully so, because Mario Bros. Wonder should win as many awards as possible and really even get into that Game of the Year conversation, in my personal opinion. Mortal Kombat 1 for Best Fighting or God of Rock or Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2. Now, obviously, there's no Smash on here. Uh, Smash would win immediately, but... Uh, we will go with, I'm going to say, I mean, who I think will win, it could be Street Fighter 6. Um, I think it's between that and Mortal Kombat 1, clearly, but we'll go ahead and vote with Street Fighter 6. I did like the visual style on what they did to kind of reinvent the entire feel of the game and things like that. So we're going to cast our vote towards that, even though very I haven't played Street Fighter 6 myself. And again, full disclosure, a lot of these games I have not given the either played to completion or have not even had time to check out at all. So there is going to be some limited experience with my votes here. Best RPG, Baldur's Gate 3, Final Fantasy 16, Lies of P, which I did play the first couple hours of, and I'm going to go back through and actually finish that game. Uh, I do think it's, it's incredible. I mean, the art style, the visuals, I think it's in for some of those awards later, so we'll talk about it more then, but uh, it literally is a love letter to Bloodborne and a soul style game, so big fan of it. Uh, sea of Stars, which just blew up out of nowhere, and a, a ton of people love it. JRPG fans everywhere are singing its praises, so it's really cool to see it nominated here but unfortunately one that i have not been able to boot up or spend any length of time in yet myself 
and Starfield, which a lot of people were surprised was not in the game of the year conversation. Um, we're just going to throw it just towards the game that I have had some hands on time with, which is Lies of P. You might think that's a terrible vote for best RPG, but um, and in fact, more, it being more of like that action dodge roll type of game, it gets kind of dicey on like what's RPG. It's role playing game, but uh, there's a lot of parameters around it that people care about. We're not going to put any kind of pressure on uh, what we pick here, though. Best action adventure game. Alan Wake 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which I very much enjoyed, or the obvious vote for me because it is my 2023 game of the year. It's right there with, with Mario Wonder, but in spoiler alert, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom in just about any category that this is nominated, it'll get my vote. It was that much of a incredible experience through and through. I, I'm somebody who really loved the classical older Zelda formula in the 3D uh, era, like from Ocarina of Time and up. And I even felt like Breath of the Wild, while it did so much to expand the world, take it open world for the first time and do so much right in the Legend of Zelda franchise for the first time, there was something missing, uh, whether it was the dungeons or just a particular aspect of the gameplay that I really wanted from a Zelda game. And I felt like Tears of the Kingdom did everything to elevate it to the next level and to really get me immersed. And when you talk about a story perspective, plus just the overall endless possibilities with creations that you can make and that there's no right way to necessarily solve a puzzle, but you could actually get creative and create some kind of way to do it yourself. And then it, you could still do it the wrong way because there's technically no right way. I absolutely fell in love with that. So that is a solid answer for my vote on best action adventure game then you have best action game and i do have a lot of hands-on time with armored core 6. this is a very fun game i from software is again a company that i just have all the trust in the world in and i really did enjoy this but i haven't played it to completion just yet i will say though that there's definitely a learning curve even if you are a souls fan like me it plays very different and i didn't have any prior experience with the armored core franchise um but that's the big one for me hi-fi rush i played just very briefly but never went through and completed i have to go back to that game i will go back to that game it's yet another one that i'm very intrigued by but i don't have enough hands-on time with anything else armored core 6 is going to get my vote more of just being like a hardcore from software type fan is the biggest reason it's getting that um best vr slash ar game we're just going to throw it at uh, gran turismo 7 haven't been playing any ar or vr stuff here lately that will probably change in the future but it's not anything that's really um captured my attention so far uh, we'll go ahead and hit for the best mobile game just vote final fantasy 7 ever crisis uh, another category of games that just when i want to play a game if i want to play it mobile i'm going to grab my switch i'm not going to play it on my phone that's just how i am right now i know that's different for everybody um best debut indie game the game awards there's a lot of talk about them not really knowing what an indie game is because one of the best indie game of the year things which i don't know which any of these are we're going to vote pizza tower just because i like the name pizza tower um but yeah there's some there's some dialogue around how they're making their decisions with indie game um, and you have it right here, best independent, excuse me, best independent game. And you have Dave the Diver on here, which is actually funded by like, a you know, a mega company, even though it's an indie style game and it's visuals, it's not the same thing as having like a true independent studio. Um, I will say that I don't have hands-on experience with any of these games, but Sea of Stars is going to get my vote just based off of what people have been talking about online and the reviews that I've seen for it so far. So that's definitely going to get my vote on that one. Um, best community support. Now, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Destiny 2, uh, Final Fantasy 14, which I think we're just going to give that the vote. It's one of those like MMORPGs that just completely continues to get taken to new levels with content. It's just crazy the kind of ongoing roadmap it has perfect segue and we're going to vote for it again because out of all these games i feel like if you actually step back and look at where final fantasy 14 started and where it's at now in terms of content that's obviously what should be walking away with the award um best games for impact limited to no knowledge on what any of these games are and i also don't fully understand this category so uh we're just going to uh throw a vote um at, at the uh, goodbye volcano high and you know what we're just going to vote that because we don't understand uh the game or the game or category necessarily so uh from there innovation in accessibility now this is really cool to see i've seen a lot of new accessibility options coming towards games and really being talked about and featured more um i don't have hands-on knowledge with what the big changes were this time around in these particular games so we'll just throw the vote at at spider-man 2 but again no knowledge so not the best um you know well-versed answer on that particular vote 
uh best performance uh, i'm assuming these are just like the live actor versions of in games we're gonna go um with uh with cameron here for star wars jedi survivor i'm only about 20 hours into that game and need to go back and finish it but a lot of fun and he did a great job uh, is in terms of the character and the direction of that whole character and that whole story is excellent in my opinion um best audio design alan wake 2 dead space hi-fi rush uh, marvel spider-man 2 and resident evil 4 we're gonna give this to hi-fi rush just based off of my understanding of you know how that game interacts with sound and things so definitely easy vote there best score and music hands down legend of zelda tears of the kingdom i know there's some there's some ones on here that you may say have rival it but for me the legend of zelda sound in games this is my voting list i mean that just walks away with it like heads and tails above anything else um best art direction now this is going to be a tricky one because legend of zelda tears of the kingdom is in this category but i honestly feel like if you play liza p you could make a strong case that it deserves best art direction um not to mention mario bros wonder because the kind of unique levels and designs and you know what we're gonna go mario bros wonder because thinking back of like all the crazy you know psychedelic type of like crazy um flower sections where you have to go get the uh, wonder seeds and things like that it is just an insane visual showpiece that they created there and from an artistic perspective it is i mean i think it's taking gaming to another level in terms of what you can do in terms of art and expression and things like that um best narrative in a game alan wake 2 Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, uh, Phantom Liberty, Final Fantasy 16, and Marvel Spider-Man 2. Uh, not having the hands-on knowledge so much of these games, but knowing what Alan Wake 2 actually has to offer from a story perspective with some uh, spoilers that I've seen in reviews online, it, it does kind of ruin my first playthrough of this game, but I'm going to throw my vote towards Alan Wake 2. From what I've heard of how the story goes in that game, I'm very impressed by it. I'm very excited to experience it hands on. So best narrative is going to go to that for me. Best game direction, uh, which is kind of another weird, like maybe a repeat category that I don't think you necessarily need uh, in comparison to some of these other ones. But I'm going to go with Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It is just flawless experience. Can't say good enough stuff about it. And where it takes the Zelda franchise from here is really exciting. Um, game of the year. This is the big one. Uh, this is, let me zoom out here so you can see everything clearly on screen. Uh, well, actually it kind of, that kind of messes it up. If I do that, you can still see all, all of our options here. So Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, which I, some people are debating. Yes, there's an, this is enough of like uh, a remake that it deserves to be in the conversation. Other people are like remakes should not be in the conversation. If remasters and remakes were in the conversation, I think Metroid Prime uh, remastered should be in this conversation, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, that said, we're, it's not going to go to Resident Evil 4 for me. Mario Bros. Wonder and Tears of the Kingdom, those are the two close calls. And I will say that it is crazy to me to think that I could even entertain the idea that a 2D platformer could go head to head and be a legitimate contender to a game like Tears of the Kingdom in 2023 for Game of the Year. But that is how strongly I feel about Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I do think it's in that conversation. I think it has every right to be on this list. I had some of the fun hours of my Mario gaming life with this game and I mean that legitimately I think I probably put 25 plus hours into it to 100% it and it was just flawless fun through and through and some legitimate challenge at the end then you talk about a massive adventure like Tears of the Kingdom probably spent 80 plus hours in that game still have to go back and try to do as much of the 100% check mark type of stuff as I can but I'm going to get around to that later on but from a story and gameplay perspective and just the fact that I'm not even done with it yet or even close to done with it. Whenever you talk to talk about a hundred percent perspective, it's like that is my game of the year, 2023. And I do actually think that this is the game that wins game of the year, 2023. I know there's a lot of discourse around it potentially being Baldur's Gate 3, and I can absolutely see that taking the award, but I do feel like whenever you look at the 120 different media outlets that will be ultimately having the majority say in this conversation that Tears of the Kingdom will walk away as 2023 Game of the Year, and I am hopeful that Nintendo maybe has some surprise announcements up their sleeve because they are the most nominated publisher, and they could potentially walk away with the big Game of the Year 2023 award. But I I want to hear from you guys at this point in the video your personal thoughts and opinions on which games will walk away with which awards and which ones are you most excited to see featured are you like me and you think tears of the kingdom is the big game of the year 2023 do you think it goes to mario bros wonder in a massive upset do you think it's for sure boulders gate 3 
or maybe Alan Wake 2 walks away with it as a big update. But regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about today, I do look forward to hearing from you all in the comments down below before you leave the video, as I do look forward to getting back and forth conversations started with you all around these topics. Go watch yesterday's video next if you haven't already, which is on screen right now. Also make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.